Welcome to part two. My name is Abir and in this video, I'll be going over some of the individual sounds that I've made for my World War One ambience. I'll be focusing particularly on weapon sound design, artillery, explosions, as well as going over some of the other sounds that I've incorporated into my ambience. I want to keep this as simple as possible so that everyone can follow along. I hope you enjoy the video and let's get into it. Okay, so before starting this project, I did some research into World War One weapons and history in general and compiled a list of the sounds that I was going to use in my ambience. For my ambience, I decided to go with German and British artillery, and I'll go through the list right now. Starting with the German weapons, I've got the Luger pistol, the G98, which was a German rifle, the Mauser 1918 anti-tank rifle, the MG08, which was a German machine gun, the Bayard 1908, which I believe was a mini handgun, German heavy cannon, I've got German mortar and the notorious flamethrower. For the British weapons, I've got the classic Lee Enfield rifle, the Webley .45 handgun, the Lewis gun, the Vickers machine gun, British cannons and a trench whistle. I've also sound designed some mortar sounds, German trench mortar, British Stokes mortar, as well as using grenades, tanks and bombs, explosions, distant, close. I've also used some additional sounds, environmental sounds such as fire, rain, wind and thunder, as well as aircraft sounds, biplanes, bullet whizzes, dogs running in the trenches, soldiers shouting, going over the trenches. I've got trench build sounds such as sandbags, wooden planks, water pumps, water puddles and digging sounds. So this is pretty much the entire list of the sounds that I've used in my ambience. Let's get into logic now and I'll show you how I sound designed some of these weapons. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'll show you a few examples so you get the general idea. Okay, we're in logic right now, which is essentially a music production and audio editing software. I've been using this for years for all my sounds. And I'll start with showing you how I made my British Army Lee Enfield rifle. So I'll give you a quick preview of that. So that was the final sound design and I'm going to break down how I made this. So when I design my gun sounds, I usually follow a template and the template goes like this. The transient, the body, the sub, the tail and the mech. Now I'll go through each one as I go along and I'll explain the purpose of each one. So for the transient, if I just solo this, so these are all subsections by the way, they open up. It's like a drop down menu. So for the transient, it's essentially the beginning of the sound. So when you pull the trigger, the sound of the trigger clicking and the first burst of energy. So I'll play that for you. And again. And the transient is followed by the body. So the body is essentially the main characteristic of the gun. It's what allows us to identify the gun. And for the body, I've mishmashed bunch of different rifle samples together and I've shaped them, EQ'd them so that they sound like the Lee Enfield rifle. Well, this is my representation of that. So the transient follows the body and I'll play that for you. And again, and that is the body. So the body is usually layered with some sub sounds. I've used a few different kick drums. So the sub essentially gives us the power of the gun. It's the thickness, the low end, the heft of the gun. And I'll play you that. And again. And then followed by the mech. So the mech is essentially the mechanism of the gun. Guns have moving parts. For this, I've got the reloading of the gun. As you may or may not know, the Lee Enfield is a bolt action rifle. So once you shoot the gun, you pull the bolt back and then you reload. And I've used multiple different sounds, springs, clicks, sliding sounds, metal sounds to create the mechanism. And I'll play that for you. One more time. 
So that's the mech and finally the tail. The tail is what I usually do the last and the tail is essentially the environment of the gun. So where is the gun being placed? Is it indoors? Is it outdoors? Is it in a bunker? So I'll give you some examples of that. So we've got forest. We've got a bunker. You get the idea. So all together, this is how it sounds. I've pretty much applied the same principle, the same method to my other gun sound designs. And this is it pretty much. Okay, so for the G98, which is pretty much the equivalent of the Lee Enfield rifle, I've used the same principles to design this and I'll play this quickly for you. Once again. And like before, I've used the same layout. So I've got the transient, I've got the body, I've got the sub, the mech and the tail. And I've got some bullet shells here as well. So if I open this up, you see that it follows pretty much the same format. And I'll play these individually. So the transient, the body, the sub, the mech, which is actually a Remington sample that I've used, and the tail, which I've placed this gun outdoors. And I've also used a shell. So all together, So very similar to the Lee Enfield with slight differences in terms of the body to define this gun and make it sound like the G98. Next up is the Mauser 1918. This gun is huge and it's powerful. So the idea behind this was to just get a really loud, explosive, powerful, thick sounding gun. And I'll play that for you right now. So there's a lot going on here. The first bit is loading the gun with the bullet. And then that's followed by the transient. I'll just zoom in. So you've got the transient. I'll play that for you. Which is followed by the body. So for the body, I've used lots of different samples. I've used the cannon sample, an explosion sample. A uh, gunshot sample and just different different samples combined together, like before, mishmashed together to create the characteristic of this gun. And then that is followed by the sub, which is essentially a kick which I've distorted to make it really thick and heavy. And that is followed by the mech. And then this is followed by the tail. So that's outdoors and then I've got the loading section of the gun. So lots of different samples here. So once you fire the gun, reload. And that pretty much makes up this gun. I'll play that for you one more time. I love the sound of this gun. It's just so hefty and big. And that's that. Next up is the Lewis gun, which was developed by the Americans and used by the British Army. I'll play you a quick preview. Love the sound of this gun. Powerful. Once again. Damn. Don't want to get hit by that. This gun, once again, follows the same principles as my other guns. I've got the transient, which is the clicking sound. And this is layered with the body. I'll play that by itself. So as you can see, the body is the main characteristic of the gun. I mean, when you hear this, you know immediately this is a machine gun. So I've blended some different samples and I've shaped it to sound like the Lewis gun. Next up, I've got the mech. 
So it's just the little metal bits moving in the machine gun. And then the sub, which is essentially an 808. And this is followed by the shells. You've got lots of shells dropping on the floor. And this is followed by the tail. And all together, So that's eight shots there, and I've made multiple versions of this. I've got two shots, triples, singles, and whatnot. So I've also added different variations because if I just do them all the same, it would just sound robotic. So I've got variations here. I'll just play a few. And that is the Lewis gun. Okay, next up is the German MG08 machine gun. <laughs> Scary. Don't want to get hit by that. Once again. So powerful, powerful gun. Same again, like the Lewis gun. Transient body, sub, mech and the tail. Here's one. So these are the individual shots and I've made different variations to add variety because I don't want to be repeating the same sound over and over again. It would just sound robotic. So the tiny, tiny subtle differences. And I've put them together to make the MG08. Just love this gun. And that is the MG08. This is the British machine gun, the Vickers gun. And funny thing is I designed this gun and I completely forgot to use it in my final ambience. So I'll probably use this in another video, but I'll just show you anyway. I really love the sound of this gun. And here is the Vickers gun. Well, this is a single shot of the Vickers gun. And these are different variations I'll play. Love the sound of this, thought I'd just quickly show you. This is a German flamethrower, slightly different from the previous guns, but essentially following the same principle. I really enjoyed making this one, probably one of my favorite sound designs of this project. And I'll play you a quick preview of the flamethrowers that I've created. The way I went about designing this is I collected some samples of Bunsen burners, fireworks, blow torches, propane gas, and I've just EQ'd and shaped them to the way I want and I've incorporated it into this. So at the beginning of the sound, you've got the trigger. So a flamethrower is essentially a gun, just firing flame and fire. So this is just before the flame comes out of the muzzle. And then you've got the trigger. It's a gun essentially, you're pressing a trigger. And then I've got the ignition flame. So just as the flame comes out of the muzzle. And then I've got a second flame. And then these two are the body of the sound. I'll play that for you. And then finally the fire going out when you release the trigger. And all together. Brutal, brutal weapon. A lot of the soldiers were terrified of this. That is the flamethrower. Next up is the British Webley 0.45 handgun. I'll play that for you quickly. So we've got the transient, as always, the body, the sub and the tail and the mic. So if I just play this individually. So the initial trigger, as always, followed by the body, 
sub tail and the mech so this is a revolver so you can hear the bullets being taken out and then loaded injected and whatnot And that is the British Webley 0.45 handgun. These are some British Canon sounds that I've designed and I'll show you the sound design behind this. So I've got a Bunsen burner. I've got a riser effect that I've made. And a Canon sound. And together. I've got different variations of this. Another one here. So I made a variety of different cannon sounds, different variations, just to add variety in my sound design. So for this, I've layered different rise sounds with uh, small hand mortar sounds. So these are the rise sounds. Really cool sounds that were designed. Next up, I've got some German heavy cannons. And what I've done for this is layered cannon sounds with explosions and a few other different sounds and I'll just play this for you crazy loud and explosive so that's just an example of some of the artillery sounds that I've designed. I've gone ahead and saved all of those in individual folders like this. And for the rest of the sounds, I'll just play you some of the sounds that I've used. So for example, uh, water pump. So water pumps were used in the trenches to get rid of the water because it often got flooded. I've got foldy sounds of soldiers running. So I've got wood plank sounds, so soldiers working with wood in the trenches. And I've got some sandbag drops. I've got some hammering sounds. I've got some sounds of dogs. Dogs were commonly used in the trenches as messenger dogs. And I've got some biplane sounds. So I've got different variations. So those were the biplanes and that's pretty much it. Oh, I've got some grenade sounds as well. And I think I've covered everything. So that's about it really. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in part three where I'll be combining my visuals and all the sounds that I've designed in this video and showing you how my ambience came together. So I'll see you in part three. Thanks for watching.